number 2 on foundation of astronomy today we are going to discuss sky motions of earth and the moon in the last class we have come to a summary that astronomy is a study of universe we use scientific method and language of mathematics to help us understand our place in the universe so let us repeat the class question which we discussed in lecture number 1 which of the following ranks the size of listed objects in the correct order from smallest to largest so you can look through the choices and the right answer is c astrioids solar system galaxy universe universe is the largest of all the four now the next question which of the following is a distance so recollecting previous class we know that light year is a unit of distance so right answer is 500 light years again which of the following is a time choice a 500 light year 8.3 light minute 4 hours 2.5 light hours okay of course for time the right answer is c 4 hours another question which of the following represents a scientific way of looking at nature question number a all ideas are equally valuable and should be equally respected well established idea should never be checked or tested nature informs us about the usefulness of our idea c choice a is not a valid choice because all ideas are not equally valuable some are much better valuable some should be neglected choice b is also not a possibility because well established idea can be checked and rechecked every time this was discussed in the last class also that a scientific theory is validated by rigorously checking so the right answer is c nature informs us the usefulness of our idea so that is the scientific way of looking at nature because our ideas should be useful in explaining the phenomena in nature so the right answer is c which of the following is a valid scientific hypothesis a part of the universe will never be discovered stars generate energy by burning coal there are process in nature that we will never understand choice a and c cannot be a hypothesis because it can never be tested so the only hypothesis which can be tested is stars generate energy by burning coal we know that it is not by burning coal stars generate energy but it is rather by nuclear fusion but this hypothesis could be test so this choice is the right answer for this question now let's see here a look back time stimulator i shall provide you with a link also by using this link you can actually calculate the time at which you will observe a supernova so this can be done by yourself by going to the website link which i am going to give after the lecture so coming to today's class today we are going to discuss about sky the daily patterns of rising and setting is due to earth's rotation 
the annual patterns of stars and constellation in the sky is due to earth's revolution the changes in the length of day and the intensity of light that create the season is due to axial tilt of the earth the phases of the moon is due to moon's revolution around the earth these are the main points which i am going to touch in this lecture once again i would like to repeat the rising and setting of the sun or the daily patterns you see is due to earth's rotation the annual patterns of the stars and constellation that moves around the sky is due to earth's revolution the axial tilt of earth is actually the reason for seasons and moon's revolution around the earth causes different phases of moon like crescent moon new moon full moon etc so let us discuss patterns in the sky what do we observe on the sky is due to rotation of earth revolution of earth axial tilt of earth orbit of the moon so whatever you observe in the sky is due to rotation of earth the patterns people noted in the sky were the clues to understand this motion and other phenomena so we can observe these three phenomena by observing the patterns in the sky so let us discuss the rotation of earth when viewed from earth's north pole planetary orbits as well as the rotation of most of the planets and the orbits of most moons are counter clockwise a very important point to remember the apparent motion of stars across the sky is the results of earth's rotation on its axis if we look down at the north pole you will see that earth rotating in counter clockwise direction the opposite would be true if we are viewing from the south pole if you are viewing from the south pole then earth is rotating in the clockwise direction again one day is 24 hours one rotation with respect to the stars is actually 2 hours 23 hours and 56 minutes one rotation with respect to sun that is what we call solar day that is 24 hours while 23 hours and 56 minute is the time taken for one rotation with respect to a distant star like polaris and it is called sidereal day earth rotates counter clockwise and also orbits the sun in the counter clockwise direction a very important point it is happening counter clockwise which you have to remember now we know the sun rises in the east and sets in the west so question is which way is earth rotating answer is towards the east this not towards the west the point of this question is to get the students to realize that the apparent motion of sky is opposite from actual motion of earth so choice is c we are earth is rotating towards east while we see sun rises from the east and sets in the west now another important topic that you have to understand is celestial sphere it is sometimes convenient to think that the sky is a large sphere centered on earth this is called celestial sphere i will show you a video for understanding the celestial sphere and the link of the video shall be provided at the end of the class the celestial sphere is circumpolar at the north pole in north pole no stars 
rises or sets all are constantly above the horizon such stars are called circumpolar stars and the word circumpolar is referred to all those stars when viewed from north pole when we observe these stars from any other point then the stars appear to move in counter clockwise direction as shown in the figure question from what location on earth would all stars on the celestial sphere be visible the answer is equator at equator an observer with an unobstructed view would see all stars rise and set no stars are circumpolar observer at the equator can see the entire celestial sphere as it rotates each day so at equator all stars rises and sets now what would be the sky look like from a latitude of 30 degree north at 30 degree north some stars will be circumpolar and some would be never visible all stars will be circumpolar at uh, north pole all stars will be visible at equator 